What's going on YouTube? CyberOptic here with a brand new video for you today. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about roughness maps. Now in the previous game, we did not have the ability to add these inside of the workshop. However, there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with roughness maps inside of CS2. So inside of this video, I'm gonna show you guys how you can create these roughness maps. I'm also gonna show you guys a few different ways that you can use them to give you guys a building point from which you can go out and start creating some really cool designs of your own. So that's what this video is gonna be about. So anyways, let's go. So the first thing we're gonna talk about in this video is roughness maps and how to use them. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with what these are, these are basically a map that tells the game engine which parts of your weapon that you want to be shiny or metallic and which parts you want to be rough. It works off of a grayscale value, sort of like your alphas, with white being the most rough and black being the least rough. Now, for this example today, I'm actually going to be mixing together both metallics and non-metallics, and I'm actually going to be using the gunsmith paint kit in order to do this. Now, as you guys can see here, I've created a very simple UV of the P250. Uh, you'll notice some big color variations here. First and foremost, you'll see these very light colors and also these bright greens. Those are going to sit in that 180 to 250 range because I actually want those parts to be metallic, while some of these mid gray and darker gray colors are gonna sit down closer to 55. Now, if I was to import this into the gunsmith, the gunsmith is automatically going to make everything metallic, and since these are not within that metallic range, they're just going to look absolutely terrible. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create a roughness map and tell the game engine which parts of this we want to be metallic and which ones we do not. When it comes to burning your roughness maps, there's actually a little bit of strategy involved in this. Now, obviously, because of the colors that I have set on this piece of the weapon, I know that it's going to be metallic because it sits in that 180 to 250 range. However, the thing I need to decide is how much reflectiveness do I want on the surface? Uh, if I don't want it to be overly reflective, then I would go down here at that point. I would set my roughness maybe down to around 0.1 or 0.2 and then burn off my roughness map. However, if I want it to be fully reflective, then I actually don't have to burn a roughness map at all. When we burn all of these other pieces, it's actually going to create a black background. And because there's no information in this spot right here, the game engine will see this piece as being fully reflective. Uh, so that's just something you kind of have to play around with. You know, whenever you are deciding which parts of your weapon are going to be metallic, you also have to decide how much reflectiveness that surface is going to have. So for my project, I've actually decided that I'm going to leave this piece alone and not burn any sort of roughness map for it. That's basically because I want this to be fully reflective once we get it to the workshop. So we're going to move on to the next piece right here. Now in the previous video, I talked about leaving your roughness right here in the middle whenever you are burning off your albedos. Uh, but whenever you get ready to burn your roughness, this is actually how you're going to control it. You're going to want to turn your roughness either up or down using this slider right here in your principal BSDF. Then once you have your roughness set, the next thing you'll want to do is make sure your UV is active. You'll be able to tell by the white line around the outside of it. Also, you want to make sure that this drop down is set to generated. Then once your UV is set up, all you'll have to do is go over to UV editing, set your bake type to roughness, and then just click bake. Now, as you can see, I have a roughness map for those indented pieces of my weapon. Uh, so real quickly, I'm going to save this off. I'm gonna hit Shift Alt S. Uh, and we're just going to save this off as indents. Uh, now I'm going to go through and I'm going to do this for all of the other pieces of my weapon that I want to be rough inside of my design. Now that I have all of my roughness maps baked, the next thing I want to do is I want to bring them over into a program like Photoshop or GIMP. And I just want to blend them together and then burn them off as a TGA file. So real quickly, we're just going to bring these over into our program. 
Once we have all of our roughness maps set up, the next thing we want to do is we want to blend these together using the difference mode. So I'm gonna to go to the first one in my list. I'm gonna to go to this drop down right here and I just want to select difference. And we're gonna do that for each one of the ones in this list except for the very last one. So this is going to be my final roughness map. All of the different parts that are in white are going to represent the parts that I want to be rough and anything that was left out in this black area is actually going to be metallic. The next thing I want to do is I want to go to file export. Uh, we want to change the name of this. So since I used example for my color map, I'm just going to make this example underscore rough. And then I want to change my extension to be TGA. I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to export this. So now we have our roughness map ready to go and we can bring this over into the workshop and see what this looks like. Now, as you guys can see, I have moved my design over into the workshop and you can see the result that we got. The top part of this weapon is very shiny and reflective, while the bottom part, the actual grip part of the weapon, is very rough. Uh, so that's exactly what I was trying to do inside of my project. However, I do want to make one other point very quickly. You'll remember from the previous video where I talked about the possibility of pushing yourself outside of the PBR range if you were adding things like metallics or roughness whenever you were burning your albedo maps. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you are going to be going back and adding roughness maps to your design later, it's still going to have that same problem. As you can see, I have chosen a color for my grip that is in the very bottom of that color range. Uh, so if we go in here and we add our map full bright command, you'll notice that it is flashing blue. By adding this roughness map to this, I've actually pushed myself outside of that range. Uh, so that's just one thing to be aware of, you know, even if you are setting your colors up above that range when you are doing your albedos, whenever you go to add your roughness maps, you are still going to be darkening up those parts of the weapon. So that's just something you need to be planning for whenever you are coming up with the colors for your design. So the next thing I'm going to demonstrate for you guys is how to add metallic graphics over the top of non-metallic parts of your weapon. Now, if you remember from earlier, we have this green color added to our slide. Because this color still sits in that non-metallic range, we actually do not have to change this. However, I am going to darken it down just a little bit. Uh, but this time we are going to have to add a roughness map to this in order to tell the game engine that we now want this piece rough. Then I'm going to go in and add a graphic to it, and I'm also going to add a mask that tells the engine that I just want that graphic to be metallic. So real quickly, I'm gonna show you guys that process. So the first thing you want to do, of course, is to draw out your graphics. Now you'll notice that I have drawn out two here. Uh, the one on the left, of course, is going to be for my roughness map. Since I want this to be fully metallic, I want to make sure and make this graphic black. On the right, you are going to pick your color. Obviously, this is going to be in that 180 to 250 range. I have chosen to go with a white color because I want my graphic to be fully silver. Uh, so this is the first step. You want to draw out two sets of graphics, one for your roughness map and then one for your color map. The next thing you want to do is you want to come in and add a base color to your weapon. Uh, this is going to be for your color map. We're gonna go ahead and hit quick edit so that this opens up inside of Photoshop. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab both of these graphics and I'm going to bring them in at the same time. Uh, that way they're the exact same size. I'm just going to click off and then click off again and move this one to the top. Uh, next, we're going to select both of these graphics. We're going to hit Control T so that we can resize them together. Uh, this is just going to make sure that they are the exact same size and that they are in the exact same location as one another. We're just going to move this to where we want and click off of it. Uh, next, I'm going to open up a new file. So let's go to File New. Let's select another 2048 by 2048. Let's go back to this one and let's take this back graphic, the black one, and let's just do a control C, go here, and then do a control shift V. Then we'll just delete our background. Uh, and then we'll just save this one for later inside of our project. 
Now we can delete it out of our color map here. Let's just go ahead and delete this. Let's delete our layer one. Let's go to file save, go back over into blender and click apply. And now we have our color added to our weapon. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is we want to go in and we want to create the image for our roughness map. So now that I'm back in my shading tab, I'm going to hit shift a, and I'm going to go to texture image texture. I'm going to click on new and this time let's just call this slide rough. I mean, you can call it whatever you want. We're going to also make this 2048 by 2048. Uh, again, like I mentioned before, if you want to bump this up to 4096, by all means do so. I'm only keeping this at 2048 by 2048 to make these projects go a little bit faster when I'm burning stuff off. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to go down here to our color. We're going to change this to a very bright white. And then we're just going to click OK. And we're just going to leave this here for now. Uh, I'm going to go back over to texture paint. I'm going to make sure that this one, the new texture that we created is selected. We're going to go to quick edit. I'm going to go find that black graphic. I'm going to select all edit, copy merged, go here and do a control shift V, or you could do a control C control shift V either way. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to delete layer one. We're going to file save, go back to Blender and click apply. Uh, so now we have two different image textures. We have one for our roughness map and we have one for our color map. Now, obviously at this point, you would want to go ahead and burn this off into your color map. So we're just gonna assume that that's already done. Uh, now we're on to the roughness maps and we have this image right here. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to add a color ramp. So let's hit shift A, let's go to converter and go to color ramp and just add this right here in the middle. We're going to connect our color up to this fact right here. And then we're going to take this output and we're going to plug it into our roughness. Uh, next, I'm going to select my UV here. I'm going to go to generated. We are going to go over to our UV editing and then we are just going to bake our roughness map. So let's just go ahead and click bake. Now, as you can see, I have my roughness map done and you will notice that my graphic is now black while the rest of this is white. Uh, we can then take this over into the workshop and the result that we should get is that all of this part of the body will be rough since it is white, while this graphic is going to be metallic because it is actually black. So now that we're back in the workshop, we can see that we have the desired result. Our graphic on the weapon is actually reflective while the rest of our slide is non-reflective. Uh, so that's just something I wanted to show you guys real quick. You know, there may be times in your design where you only want certain parts of your weapon to be metallic. You can go in, you can actually create those graphics and make them solid black and then connect them up to your principal BSDF whenever you're burning your roughness map so that only certain parts are reflective. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this information and I cannot wait to see what you guys do with this on the workshop. So this concludes my video on roughness maps and hopefully you guys got a lot of really good information out of this. Now at this point in the video, I just want to take a second and really thank all of you guys who have been coming and supporting the channel for all of your likes, your comments. You know, this really means a lot to me. I don't do this for money. I really only just do this to help other artists out, to give them a starting point from which they can kind of grow and start to create their own designs. Uh, so because of you guys, we were able to hit over 800 views on the last video in the first 24 hours. That is just incredible. Uh, we're up over a thousand views right now and we are continuously growing and getting new subscribers. So to all of you guys who are supporting this channel, thank you so much. It means the world to me. Uh, also, I have to give a big shout out to Zombie and Arco Digital. Uh, during the downtime when I did not have the beta, they were the ones that were giving me information, sort of helping me to learn everything and get the information together for these videos. So without their help, I would not have been able to make that first video. So big kudos out to them as well. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this. I really appreciate it. If you would, please leave likes and comments down below and make sure and smash that subscribe button because that really helps this channel out a lot. Anyways, thank you guys so much and we'll see you in the next video.